And so as we started the series, we pulled down the engine from the SIR body, inspected the block, and checked with all the mileage it has, cleaned it up, and of course, prepped the block for the 81.5 RES pistons. Here you go. And so after that, we of course, degreed the B16B CTR cams and got all the details really good. And of course, by this time, who knows, we're gonna clean it up in final assembly and maybe start up a compression test. Alright, and as we degree the CTR cams on the previous episode, of course, and we made a specific video that we compared that we compared the B16B into a B16A camshaft and we'll have the link in the description below. So now we pull this head and reassemble it with the proper valve seals and valve springs. And now here we're done with that. Now we get this block ready and drop in the head. Okay, we make sure the deck surface is really, really clean, free from oil and all that. This way, it gives a superior head gasket sealing, especially this area here. All right? Yep. Okay, now here we have the head dropped in, and we hand tight the head studs. We keep it snug first. But of course, right now, we speed this up because it's going to get too boring. It's going to take too long because, you know, we actually wrap the head studs in plastic after cleaning it and making sure they're fully oiled. And of course the block and the threads are oiled prior, okay? So make sure everything is lubricated so that it torques really good. Like you get accurate reading, all right? Now here, we time-lapse the, the rest because, you know, it's taking too long. Now here, we're gonna do it hand tight with a ratchet wrench before torquing on the first step. All right, there you go. All right, all right, now let's go. Of course, it's 22 feet pounds torque for the first step, all right? And yes, we all like the clicking sound. It's really addicting. Yep, all right, there you go. Okay, yep, now it's gonna be good. And now we're gonna time lapse to finish the rest. Yep, yep, yep. All right, now on to the second and final step. 65 feet pounds torque, all right? It's gonna take farther. Oh crap, no, okay. Now we can make sure we arc the whole swing really good because it, it arcs a little bit farther than usual, all right? There, all right. Okay, now we just time lapse the rest. Yeah, okay. Get that clicking good, all right. Now it's fully torqued. Now we're gonna drop in the CTR cams. Okay, the intake first. Well, you know, you can start with the exhaust or whatever. You just, I just picked up the intake, that's why. Okay, we find the position where all the valves are closed, of course. This way, you don't accidentally snap the camshaft when you're tightening the cam caps. Especially when you're running aftermarket cams. They're prone to cracking. All right, there you go. Okay, this is the exhaust. Okay, we get the position really good. All right, there you go. Now we get the cam caps and complete the rest of the assembly, all right? Now we time-lapse this because it's gonna take too long. All right, there you go. We get all the cam caps snug and tap it in and then the cam rails, all right? there we make sure all the threads are clean you don't have to do this we just you know decided to do this to sort of it's quicker by a bit and this it doesn't have a really high torque so it's not gonna cross thread anything it actually just stops when it's a no when it's you know hitting something when it's really snug and of course we did run the threads through and through before assembly because we cleaned the head like at least two or three times. All right. 
And then, of course, the rest is going to be hand tied, especially the upper part or the middle part where you bolt in the valve covers because that needs a deep socket. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, now we hand tight the center part with the deep, deep socket, the T handle, so that it's all ready. All right, there you go. Yep. Now it's all snug and fit, right? And here we are now. It's 90% complete. We'll just have to put the accessories like the pulley, tightening belt and all that, but it's all good now. But let's see, we have to cover it with the valve cover first because to keep the dust out, we're gonna use the valve cover that the owner painted. I'm not a fan of gold, but this is actual clean work. It looks pretty cool actually when you think about it and when I look at it, you know? Remove the tape here. So we cover it for now because so that it doesn't get any dust. Mainly because if you look at this, let me show you. On the window, it's actually nighttime here. Look, let me show you. You can see the engine from afar. It looks really good, right? See, it's nighttime. So, you know, we're going to continue tomorrow. And hey, who knows? Maybe we'll have a bit of surprise for you on the next scene, right? And here it is. Look, it's a good job. You know, it's a job well done by the owner. It's actually painted really good. I mean, it actually looks pretty cool, right? Yep. All right. Okay, now let's take a look at the engine bay. Here it is without the engine. Of course, we cleaned this up a bit, made sure everything is good and properly done and of course going back here when we started we went for the clearances for the bearings and we're going to recap it so you guys can check the main bearings were 0 0.0015 oil clearances and we shot for the rods on 0 0.0018 so 18 inches for the clearance and of course we had the block bored and honed to suit the 81.5 pist mm pistons of, of the Arias and we shot for a 0 0.003 piston to wall clearances and that gave us about 0 0.014 inches on the ring gap for the top ring and that was good for us so that was consistent all right then of course as mentioned earlier we checked on the specs of the Arias pistons and of course with the milling on the head, we calculated to give us 11.2 is to one static compression. So now it's, we know the compression ratio is up a bit, so that was good. And of course we degreed the CTR cams and we actually used an OEM cam gear to see where the OEM specification of the CTR is and adjusted the cam gear accordingly on this cam gear here, all right? Okay, now we surprise you with this. It's now installed. Actually, we just dropped in the valve cover just so you guys can see how it did, how it looks. And actually, we wanted to see how the engine looks on the engine bay. But you can see the valve cover is not yet bolted on, right? It's not yet bolted bolted on. I mean, sorry. Okay. Now here we're setting the valve lash or valve tappets. And before we do the start up, we have to check everything, right? And also here with the valve cover removed, we actually pour about maybe roughly one liter of oil over the top here, just so that it lubricates everything here, like the camshafts, the lost motion assembly, even the rocker arm pads on the camshaft itself, because even though the oil pressure is going to be good, it's still dry on initial startup. So you got to be safe on that, right? And that goes for all engines that's newly built. It could be a D series, a B series like this, or even an H22, or even a K series. You got to lubricate everything before startup. This way it pre preserves a good life. And now here we pour the rest of the oil. We can check it here. Let's have a listen to this as we pour it. Yep. Yeah, my colleague was worried because he we might over pour and starts dripping oil. We we don't want to mess around with the clean engine, clean engine bay. 
Oh, and one more thing, because we didn't really talk about it on this series or in this build, because we did it last year, the intake manifold here, the P30 intake manifold, the stock SIR, we ported this. And also you can check out this video here, and the link will be in the description below instead of clicking up here for this, because we did exactly what we did to this manifold, all right? And also, if you remember, in episode one of this series, we showed you the abnormal wares of the bearings of this engine. You got to check in this one on how to properly clean the engine, parts, block, and everything before final assembly. That's really important. And the link will be also in the description below. Don't worry about that. And because previously on episode four, we degreed the CTR cams to this engine, we also made a video on comparing the B16B to the B16A cams, and you can click it here, or it's going to be in the description below as always. So this one will give you a lot of good information, right? Okay. All that's left now is actually we're waiting for the customer. The customer ordered the water pipe for the back of the block. This way it's brand new and clean. And of course, the other things that you're going to check, like the wiring and all that. And also the owner did say there are times or every once in a while, his clutch will just be fully depressed. Like it won't push up. So we're double checking that and we're going to bleed it properly this way. There's no air pockets or air bubbles. So it's going to be a flawless operation whenever he's using it. So that's the thing here. All the stuff that we share, it's not really like we're promoting DIY. Unless you live in a country where there are no shops or no mechanics that can do work for you, you can do it on your own. But locally, especially locally, we don't really promote DIY. What we're showing here is this is how we do a simple rebuild. It, it may be a simple stock engine or a race engine. We don't take no shortcuts. This is for you guys to be aware of where to go or what shops to avoid. Not DIY, because I've seen people who try to DIY everything and just ends up making more mistakes. That's not good. So next up for this project is, of course, we compression test before the initial startup. And then of course we do the warm up and all that. And then test drive. We know we've all been waiting for that, right? So as soon as next episode wraps up, we're going to have it here and you can click just here for that.